Welcome back to the Restaurant Technology Guys podcast. Thank you guys for jumping on. Uh, I know that, uh, as I say every time, you guys have lots of choices on how you spend your time, so I appreciate you guys jumping on the show and uh, listening to me chat with some really cool people. Today we are joined by two different guests. One is a second, maybe third time participant. I don't know, Chad and I have known each other for a little bit, and uh, he brought one of his, uh, his clients that's in the restaurant industry. But Chad, why don't you introduce yourself to those that aren't familiar with who you are, and then we'll introduce Jeff and let him... Uh, talk a little bit about who he is. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you for having uh, Jeff and I on, on your program today. Um, my name is Chad Horn. I'm the co-founder of Devour. Um, the, I've been in the restaurant tech scene for, I would say, around 15 years. But uh, in late 2021, my co-founder, Shelly Ruppel, and I created uh, a company to bridge the restaurant world with this emerging technology you know, that most of your viewers might associate with the name blockchain. Mm -hmm. all kinds of things you can do with it but uh, we recognize that it needed to be people from industry to help restaurants get value out of this amazing technology that is changing everything and uh, so this uh, that's what devour is now when we started we didn't, didn't know exactly what that looked <laughs> like and we knew that not every restaurant would be figuring out this space anytime soon so we needed to make it easy and then uh somewhere along the way we met jeff who just kind of right there with us thinking about the future and innovating and what the, the future, what where guests are going to be in the future and how to properly engage with them. And so um, it was a natural partnership and, and Jeff uh, and the Wowbow team are doing things in this space um, that uh, we don't see a lot of brands doing yet, but we know with way they're executing, it's smart on multiple levels. And I hope we get into that today um, yeah. and how the Bowergo can help power that. We're going to see a lot of other brands uh, wanting to, to follow what they see going on now. I love yeah. that. I, I, and I'm sure we'll get into the education about kind of what is blockchain and how does it play into it. But right. um, just so that everybody's not like, who's this Jeff guy and why is he on? Jeff, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, uh, both your, your your own personal story and then kind of your story of Wow Bow and where, uh, where you guys are at now? Sure, I can do that. And you might still hear afterwards, why is this guy on it? But I <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to be judged. That, that's, got, that's up to the audience to judge All whether right. any of us want to want to be on the uh, on the show and anybody wants to listen. Appreciate that. So uh, I've been with Lettuce Entertain You Restaurants. It's a restaurant group based out of Chicago, 52-year-old privately held restaurant group. I just passed, surpassed 30 years with them. Uh, I've worked on a number of different projects and concepts within Lettuce. For the last 13 years, I've been running a brand, 14 years, a brand called Wow Bao, which is a quick serve, fast, casual Asian restaurant. Uh, we started as brick and mortar. We've been involved in new sports stadiums, college campuses, airports, music venues. Uh, in 2017, we got involved with private equity, Valor Equity Partners, who took a majority stake to fund our growth. We currently, uh, by the end of this summer, will be in over 5,000 grocery stores with our product, both fresh and frozen. We launched a virtual dining segment of our brand back in late 2019, prior to the pandemic. And then when COVID hit, we had explosive growth. And now we have over 700 locations between the US and Canada. We recently got involved with hot food vending machines where we have about 40 machines deployed across the country where you can get Wow Bao served hot in 32 seconds out of these machines. And uh, a year ago, we became the first brand to have a rewards program, a virtual brand to have a, a rewards program. And then uh, May of this year, after partnering with uh, Flaunt and Devour and Patronics, we evolved that rewards program into the first virtual loyalty program that incorporates Web3, Metaverse, and NFTs. Uh, that was a lot. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure we're going to dig into all of that. And uh, uh, again, I've been a huge fan of uh, not just, you know, Melman and, and, you know, just the whole Lettuce group for a really long time. But uh, but I, I personally got a chance to experience the brand uh, this past May in, in Chicago a little bit, as well as, uh, and I've run into it a couple of times, but it's been fun to watch your guys' growth, both digitally and, and, uh, and the like. Chad, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about you know, so you were on, I don't know, it's probably a year, a little bit more than a year ago, whenever you guys launched, it was pretty soon after you guys launched and, you know, mm -hmm. you did a lot of education, but why don't you take us through what it is that, that you're trying to solve for in this digital web three space, because I think it's going to really tie into what the team at Lettuce and the team at Wellbauer are doing in conjunction with you guys, as well as some others. But I'd love to lay the foundation that says, what is it that you're trying to tie together between this, you know, digital and, and, and physical space? Um, for those that either didn't listen now or how it's even evolved over the last year. 
Yeah, I think the, the first problem we saw that to solve was, you know, something we had seen before time and time again, as would uh, both of you, is that restaurant, the restaurant industry is usually not the first and often the last to the party when it comes to new technologies. And we knew the, the first thing we want to do is make sure the restaurant industry was had a seat at the table when it came comes to this new wave of technology, again, under that banner of blockchain. Um, and then what <clears throat> we realized uh, that would start to look like and the help in terms of a kind of more micro level problem is helping restaurants engage customers where they are, right? The, mm -hmm. the Gen Z on down, they engage digitally, right? The, it's often referred to as a digital native gener generation. They're, they hang out in different places. The way to reach them um, is, is very different. And uh, this technology has a lot to do with how you engage that next generation. So we're thinking about how do we solve that problem of helping restaurants use the blockchain uh, to, to engage their future customers, which is hugely important because as a, as a brand, you always have to be where your customers are. I love that. I love that. Um, before I, I tip, tip the scales over to Jeff and talk a little bit about kind of how they, they think about this, there's a lot of times that blockchain and Bitcoin get tied together. And I, I know um, as well as you guys know that those aren't one and the same, but oftentimes the consumer, general public, watching mainstream media news or not in the technology space, think of those two things somewhat mm -hmm. synonymously. Can I guess you debunk that myth, Chad, just because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not doing that Bitcoin thing. I can't do that because it's it's not controllable or whatever. But I'd rather you talk about that so that people don't turn us off and go, oh, those guys are crazy. They're way out in space and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'm not going to spend a long time on it because I think it can be dunked with a very simple analogy. You can pick it. You can think of any given website that you don't like or any company that's on the web. You can think they're no no good, but you don't dismiss the internet. Yes. Right? Love the that. The internet is the underlying technology. It's valuable. It's changed everything. Blockchain's the same way. Even if you don't agree with Bitcoin, I and mean, a lot of people love Bitcoin, it has nothing to do with the underlying technology uh, and where it's going. That's uh, That might be the best example that I've heard anybody say to, to really break it down super simply. So Jeff, as you are leading this brand and you've, you've been around the lettuce group for a long time and um, you know that you guys are, are are historically one of those brands that I like to go visit because you guys are always on the forefront, whether it's new technology in the kitchen or it's new technology for the guests or you guys have always been there. I mean, you've been there long enough to know that you guys have always been pushing the envelope of what does dining need to look like? How how are we going to engage with our guests? Talk to me a little bit about how I guess in theory you guys went to market as you recognize this technology might be at a place that you guys can adopt it and, and differentiate yourself as to where you're going? Yeah, it's a great question. And just for your listeners, when you talk about us being an uh, adopters of technology in 2010, we had self-ordering kiosks. Yep. At the time, there was only, you know, airports, movie theaters, and banks were the only places you had self-ordering kiosks. And in 2017, we had fully automated restaurants where you had zero interaction with the human and all your food was delivered out of uh, LED, LCD, uh, animated cubbies, personalized cubbies. So we've always done a lot with technology. Uh, and when, uh, you know, as Chad was saying, I like being an early adopter to technology. By doing so, there's a number of benefits. Number one, you get access to technology before most other people. Number two is you get to input and and help create and write the narrative of that technology because people are looking how to make the technology easier and better. And number three is I get recognition from groups like yourself who want to talk to us and keep us at the forefront of what we're doing. And what happened was, uh, as I said earlier, that a year ago we created a rewards program. And the reason why I say that is there's, we have 700 locations that are virtual where you're available to get food on DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. And we're trying to move people off of those platforms onto wildbow.com to place an order. The reason yep. why is we get insight into their demographics. We get uh, information about those consumers. We have a way to communicate with the consumers versus on the third party platform. We don't get any of that information. So to move people to wildbow.com, we started a rewards program. And I say it was a rewards program because for every dollar you spent, you get a point. 100 points got you $7. Basically, you got a $7 off your fifth order based on our check average but it was not a loyalty program it was rewards and the reason why is loyalty does not exist in the virtual space you're opening up the app you're picking who to order from boom you order that's all there is to it 
we wanted to create loyalty. We wanted to create community. We wanted to create dialogue. We wanted to give back to the people who are giving to us. Uh-huh. And by embracing the Web3 technology and, and, and creating a, a membership program, which is what we've done, for $99, you get your own personal, we call it a collectible. We're, not, we're trying to steer away from NFT as there's negative connotation in the public space with that right now. But it's an avatar. It's a, it's a piece that is owned on the blockchain. You can purchase it with a credit card and an email. You don't need to use crypto, but you get your own individual. Yeah. You get your own individual. And then what happens with that is you get discounts at wowbow.com on your food. You get discounts on our merchandise. You get double rewards points. And we have a way to communicate with you now and create a community. And that creates loyalty. And then partnering with a group such as Devour, who's using different groups on in the metaverse and on web three and in nfts we can cross promote one another we can give specials to people who who understand this technology and utilize it differently than the average person so it's opening up a a a world literally a world of Uh uh, uh, new ways to communicate and new ways to partner and new ways to experience and always being a leader in technology and an embracer of new technology this is the forefront this is the next place to go to, right? We're like, for, for those of you who are old enough listening, we're like James T. Kirk here going where no one's, you know, we're boldly going where no one else has gone before. What I do know is that sometime in the next 18 to 36 months, everybody's going to be playing in the space. Uh-huh. And what will happen is over the next 18 to 36 months before they get there, we can write the narrative, we can experiment. And when everyone else finally enters the place, we are going to be so much further ahead of them and on to the next thing and constantly improving because of the uh, uh, adaption right now. So I love that concept because I know when Chad and I first talked, there was this whole, um, this whole, like, how do I overcome the idea of what do I get for this? I'm having to, I'm having to engage with this technology. And, and I love the fact that you guys have created a, a point of differentiation. I say often on the show and it's the restaurant technology guys, but technology for technology's sake does nothing. Technology that truly engages the guests and creates a better guest experience, creates more loyalty, creates something that they can't get elsewhere is really where I try and push people. Um, I guess when you guys consider this, Chef, because as a consumer of your brand, paying more to get something is great. How did you guys, I guess, de- detail that value proposition? Because you've you've seen the adoption curves. You know that very small amounts will, will be the early adopters, and you probably got a lot of traffic in the beginning, but then it probably flattens out. And so you got to figure out how to sell that next kind of that next level so that you start to, to create the flywheel. How do you guys consider those guests and what kind of things did you guys learn in, on that process? Your question there had sparked so many different thoughts for me that I'm going to try to answer your question, but I also want to get the thoughts out that came. The first is you mentioned this technology about, you know, people have thought about what do I get out of it? That is the wrong mentality with technology. The technology for the restaurant industry or any industry is not necessarily about what do I, the owner and my business get out of it. It's uh-huh. more about how do I enhance my guest experience? So they want to come back. And then that's what creates loyalty. So you don't want to get involved with technology for selfish reasons. You want to get involved with technology to enhance not only your customer, but your employee. Mm-hmm. With being an early adapter, uh, adopter, adapter, adopter of technology, <laughs> right? Uh, we adapt, but we are adopting it. Is you have to understand there's going to be headaches. Yep. You no, know, and I love I love that you're the founder of the restaurant technology guys. There are no restaurant technology guys. There are technology guys and there are restaurant people. <laughs> no technology in the restaurant space has ever been created by a restaurant person. And we have to we have to change our model to take on this technology, which we're willing to do. And to do that success, successfully, you have to get buy in from your team. Your staff and employees need to know why you're doing it. Be mm-hmm. prepared for the headaches to come with it and be working towards the reward for the guest. So we do all of that. So now your question referred to. Once we do it, how do we communicate it to people? How do we get them to keep staying engaged with it? How do we make them want to keep doing it six months from down the road as opposed to an initial reaction? And the best way to answer that is you have to keep evolving and innovating. You don't just turn on the switch today and run the exact same switch six months from now or eight months from now. We launched our, our, our membership program. We called it the first course, right? We're in the restaurant industry. So our initial launch is the first course. Well, that means there will be a second course. And we have already spoken about the second course 
which will probably be a higher yearly fee instead of the $99 for the one now. It's going to be a little bit more. I don't have the dollar figure. And the NFT or the collectible will have different attributes than what's available at the lower price. So your, your character looks better or has more features. And we're going to add more enhancements. And when I talk about loyalty, you go back in the restaurant industry and you think about what a loyal customer got in a restaurant. You got sat at the table faster, right? The wait was mm-hmm. cut in half. The manager knew your name. The hostess knew your name. The server knew what you liked to drink. And, the, and you got a free dessert at the end of the meal. And if you were really good, a really good diner at that establishment, back in the day, the chef came out of the kitchen and the chef whites and brought you food and shook your hand. And nobody looks more like a VIP than when a chef visits your table, right? Because everyone else in the restaurant is like, why isn't the guy cooking my food, right? Who is this person they're taking time out of the dining room? So one of our thoughts is on the second course to stay engaged with people, wouldn't it be great if you could contact and connect with our chef? Our chef, Tim Hockett, has been with Lettuce for 20 some odd years and worked on very high-end dining. Imagine you were at home and cooking meatloaf and you wanted to trick out the meatloaf to be different than any other meatloaf you've ever served to your family or your guests. Wouldn't it be cool if you could get Tim to, quote, visit your table uh-huh. and help you make that meatloaf better? We threw around an idea that you could have access to talk to me. I don't think anybody wants to talk to me. What are they going to ask? <laughs> what, what, what can I offer to them? But offering to talk to that chef and have that kind of connection, as well as then opening the door to the community. And one thing we learned from COVID more than anything else we learned, and which we had forgotten, is how social humans are, right? Mm-hmm. How much and, they want, they crave real human connection, 100%. even in a virtual world, as crazy as that is. A hundred percent. And when you, when you have that human interaction, it's always around food, right? We are social creatures that require food. We celebrate with food. We commiserate with food. Mm-hmm. We say goodbye with food and we welcome people with food. Food is always there. So what an exciting opportunity we've created to engage with people around food in a new technological space and write the story of how that technology can be used. I love that. So when you say, how do you keep people coming back? You have to innovate that, evolve that and make it better every single day. And that's what I said in 18 to 36 months, when this becomes a little bit more mainstream and more people are there and they're doing X, we're going to be on, triple b c and d because we're so far right. down the flight plan with it i love that that, that you think that far ahead <clears throat> i can imagine and i'd love to ask the question jeff since you're such on the forefront of this and i'm assuming you guys hire to this level and you guys understand um i was just talking to a former uh, when i was in chicago i was talking to a former lettuce guy you probably know his name i'm not going to bring it up on the show but we can talk about it after who was in the tech space and and very much it, you know he believed that and that was kind of how you guys need to hire but I can I can imagine a, a world where they don't get it, where your staff doesn't get it, where your staff doesn't understand. How do we engage at this level to get there? You've got 700 virtual stores. You've got all of this. Talk to me about your leadership and how do you how do you paint that vision of what you need executed in a virtual world where it doesn't look the way that they've done it before in a place that nobody's ever been or you're, you're one of two or one of three that's been there? It's not that they don't get it. It's that they haven't been brought along for the ride. Okay. Right. Success is not done by one person having a vision. I can't, I, if I want to be, if I'm, when, when John F. Kennedy, who I was not alive for said, we're going to be in the moon by the end of the decade. He didn't get us to the moon. Yeah. Right. He, he had an idea, he had a vision and he brought everyone along for it and let good people do their jobs. I can't turn on any technology and it's just going to work. Uh-huh. Right? Marketing has to do their piece. Operations have to do their piece, right? Everybody, PR has to understand it. Every aspect of our business has to want it to succeed. And every person in our business has to accept it and uh, comment on it. And if you don't explain it to them, if you as a leader silo it in your organization, there's going to be more people who don't understand it than get it. And then when you get an opportunity to be on a show like this, and one of my people on my team gets questioned about it and they don't know any of the answers, that is failure with a capital F. Yep. You know, yeah. There was a group of us who, who worked diligently 
to get this turned on and build it right and whatever it may be. And there was a huge group of us who had nothing to do with it. But prior to launch, we made it very clear to everyone, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. What questions do you have? Join the website, visit it, play around with it. Here's resources to learn more. And, and look, that wasn't like we're launching on Friday. We gave that to them on Thursday. From day one, there was this buzz about what we're doing. People saw it. They had questions. We weren't sitting in a closed room. The graphic design artist doing stuff with no one seeing it. You know, we're an open bullpen where everyone can see what people are working on. So we created excitement around it. Oh, and then at, at store level, you got to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because you could go out and hire a number of people to talk about things, but you're, the store level employees that I have that are talking to guests every single day are going to talk and interact more so than any newspaper article I get. Yep. So they understand it, and you have signage in the restaurant that are telling people about it, and your staff is educated enough to talk about it. That's where the buzz gets created and the excitement and the sharing of the story. And that's what that's what gets lost sometimes. Sometimes when you're doing this, everything's top secret and you don't want anyone else to know. And, you know, pre COVID, the restaurant industry is very siloed. Right. I can't have you have my recipe. You don't know what food I'm working on. I need to be better than you. I need to steal your customer. When COVID happened, the walls came down and everybody was like, help. What are you doing? What's working? How can I help you? I don't want to see you go under. I need this. Can you get me that? And everyone just became a place of let's work together. And it has been the greatest triumph of our industry, the resiliency of the operator and the coming together of the community. And that is now translating to your point about the growing that in that, that, that company community and culture yep. of share and growth together and success. I love it. I love it. And I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And I, I mean, you're very active on social and I love watching you interact with other brands that I work with in this space. Cause you know, at the end of the day, everybody's going to rise to the level and you know, you have said it multiple times, we're going to be one or two steps ahead. Cause I'm just visionary enough and I'm willing to take enough of those risks. Chad, I'm going to pass it to you for just a second. There was an article in nation's restaurant news. I actually got interviewed for it about web three. Mm -hmm. um, I think Shelly might have been interviewed as well. Um, Joanna Fantosi, I think, is the one that wrote the article about where is things going? And are we going to get to a place where these avatars are sitting in a virtual room having a meal delivered to them and they're going to sit around a virtual table? I actually have a former coworker that made a bet with his wife. He has four kids. And he said, by the end of the decade, you know, to, to, to use your analogy, Jeff, by the end of the decade, we're going to have a virtual meal where I'm going to be on a business trip and we're going to sit down and have a date night. I'm going to be virtual and I'm going to be a hologram in front of you, you know, was his theory. And if I lose, I'm taking the whole family to Disney World. And if not, then I get this or whatever, whatever that would. Oh, I get I get the best hologram phone in the world is was his theory. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you think about that, because there was this whole idea. I know um, Jack in the Box did a little bit. Um, uh, the guys at Chipotle did some stuff with Web 3.0 and and kind of kind of that NFT, you know, to use the, the bad word. Talk to me a little bit about where that's at from a tech space and how have you seen it evolve even since you guys launched? And then really, where is the rubber meeting the road today and where where do we see it going? Yeah, it is fun to think about where this is going to go. And and uh, I, I but I do like to start. Where are we today? Right. Because. Yeah. I don't think people have a firm grasp on where we are today, where we were versus where we were a year ago, two years Absolutely. ago. What Jeff did with uh, digital collectibles, you know, back then they were called NFTs and nobody had a problem calling them that. I, I avoided using the word I even, even in a part of talking about because of the connotation, but it's the technology is valuable. But what's, what's changed is that now it's user friendly. It's so much easier to engage with this than it did. And so you can actually focus on the user experience, not just for the Web3 enthusiasts that like all the buzzwords, but for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. As Jeff talked about, it's a social log on, right? It's, it's an, it looks like an awesome, cool extension to a loyalty program that, you know, anybody can participate in. It's a membership program. There, people have a frame of reference for this. And then they see that they can do cool stuff. Uh, so where we are today is kind of user friendly, mass, mass adoption is there. Um, it's, just communicating to the customer, what do you get? What do you get? How does it work? And and um, the the really cool thing from a tech standpoint right now that I think I want everybody to understand is that 
what you can do with this, because I'm sure some people don't understand. It's like, this is like the way we were able to work together, right? Wow, wow, and devour go. There's no like complicated database integration like there is with other technologies. Mm -hmm. Because it's Web3, those, those collectibles in the blockchain, we just said, okay, yeah, we're going to recognize that. We're going to be a way for those users to get secret menu items, you know, extra loyalty points, et cetera. That wasn't complicated. And so we were able to extend that experience for Jeff's customers in a way that wouldn't have been possible before without yeah. extensive investment in, in integrations and, and technical work. And he can replicate that with all kinds of other experiences. If Jeff wants to partner with an awesome game that also recognizes collectibles and give that to his fans, he can, right? It's so the speed of innovation that is enabled by this technology and hence the way you can add to your guest experience, that is that is now, right? That is right now. And I, I and you and it's not nobody listening should think, oh, I've got to understand how the blockchain works and how transactions are recorded. Doesn't matter. It, yeah. it, it, you don't have to figure that out. That just happens to be what's enabling it. The other thing Jeff mentioned, which is super powerful, is collaborations. He's building this out, Jeff, you're, for your community, your fans. If you wanted to next week do a collaboration with another group also and with their digital collectibles and do something together for them, you could flip that on like that. And so the 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 marketing power, right, to not just engage your community, but partner with others is unlimited. Yeah. Well, let me just throw in two, uh, two thoughts to that. The first is, you know, when you talk about where is the technology going and where do you see it and I think the idea of the hologram when you're on a business trip is a fantastic one. I'd rather stay at home with my family and send my hologram. Yeah, to, to the business trip, for sure. I think it's pretty cool. We, you know, I mentioned that we launched these virtual, these uh, vending machines. We have about 40 of them deployed. Where I want to see us go is I want when you're in your metaverse, when you're playing Fortnite or Roblox or however, you know, Apple's going to improve this, whatever it may be. When you're in the metaverse, in this digital space, how cool it'd be to come upon a wild bell vending machine and you could just order the food right from the vending machine and without ever taking your headset off the doorbell rings and the food's delivered to you because of our 700 virtual restaurants, right? You don't have to pause your game to get on the phone or to go to your device and to open up DoorDash and order the food, right? It's right there and it's all in play and you're never leaving the environment. That's where we want to go in the coming months and years. I don't know what it's going to take to get there. But what I think is really important also that Chad was just speaking about, and you asked us earlier, Julian, Jeremy, about why getting involved in technology so early. When you hear the stuff that Devour is talking about doing the and the collaboration and we could do this and if we want to go there, we can do that. One reason why we can do all that is because we're early adopters. The opportunities now, everyone's testing out the technology so mm -hmm. we can be a guinea pig and get more opportunity. 18 months from now, when other brands want to get on Devour's platform, I, I'm under assumption here, and I'm not trying to do anything to hurt Devour, there's going to be a cost involved. Mm -hmm. And I hope their cost is more than my cost, <laughs> right? Because we're early to the game. And it's and that's that's why people need to embrace technology. You have to be willing to, to deal with the headache. You got it. And everybody has to be part of that headache. But the the the, the growth of where it will become Wherever the, de the developer, founder, creator of the technology thinks it's going to be, we all know it's going to be bigger. We all know it's going to be bigger. Yeah. And it's going to get bigger because of the, the inputs that we can contribute to it and the way that we are embracing and utilizing it. Well, and I think you guys talked about digital natives and they're going to expect no different at uh, some point, Jeff. My kid, my seven, my seven year old is going to expect to be able to play her game and have food delivered to her by the time she's 18. Right. Whereas I would never consider <laughs> that because I'm in my 40s and I'd be like, why the hell would I ever order inside of a game? But she's not going to know any different. When yeah. she gets to 18 or 25, no different than if somebody would have told me 10 years ago. I mean, we got our first DoorDash gift card when my daughter was born. My youngest is seven. And we got our first DoorDash gift card. And I remember going, what is this? And I'm in the restaurant tech space. <laughs> and literally, the, my wife was pregnant at home. It was a friend that said, you know, we're going to buy you a meal. And like the, the DoorDash drivers getting a gift card or, I mean, you know, credit card in the drive through and he calls because KFC didn't have whatever the hell she wanted. And so she, like he's calling from his cell phone to her cell phone. It's, this is seven years ago. If I would have told you that now was going to happen, you'd be like, that's crazy. That's never going to happen. But seven years ago, that was where it was at. You think about how much that's accelerated. 
it's insane, which I, which is really to your point. The other piece I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to ask you, Jeff, real quick to double click. You guys are partnered with Patronix. We've been a Patronix partner for a million years. That's how we actually met you guys. Um, I want to correct you. I want to correct you. We are a proud partner. Yeah, <laughs> which is awesome. And I, and I love those guys. And, and Andrew's been on the show. And he and I even talked about the the loyalty systems and, and loyalty systems that work and why they work and loyalty systems that don't. This, to me, seems like a, a, a loyalty system, a you know guest engagement system on steroids because you guys are given so much more value. Talk to me a little bit about, about that, not only integration, but why that's so critical to understand where that's at and how tech plays a part in that. Because most people, just, let's just throw out a, a, you know, get your phone number. And I have, I'm part of 75 loyalty programs and I'm not loyal. And then there's others that I'm really loyal to because they, they deliver value like you've been talking about. You know, uh, <clears throat> it's an, it's an interesting question. And, what what's happening? You referenced your, your you know your your daughter at the age of seven. I have I have a twelve year old. I have a twenty four year old. But I have a twelve year old, and just seeing the two of them interact uh, technologically is completely different. Very and, much so. You know, if, if the you know the three year old versus your seven year old is even next level about mm -hmm. it. And all I can say is every single generation is expecting more and more seamlessness, right? As little friction as possible. Absolutely. So when you talk about, you know, Patronics and integration and all, we can all go old school. We can make you carry around your, your digits and enter in this. And then this has to talk to that. And, oh, our computer down. Seamless technology is by far the most important piece of technology that you can get. And in, in the restaurant and space, it's completely impossible to have seamless technology. Yeah. It is, right. Because we all have a different POS system. We all have a different integrator. We're all on running on different apps and then we want the newest technology, but the newest technology isn't, hasn't proven itself to be partnered with this other technology. So there's no integration written. And while the community of the restaurant industry has become open and wide, understandably, the technology uh, community is much more siloed, right? Because I don't want you to steal my thing and how it's going to work. So you don't have that seamlessness. So when you talk about what Patronics and Devour and Flaunt, who's our other group that we're working with on this, we got the three groups to work to one another. Love Chad, that. you can correct me. I don't think the three groups were, were might, I'm sure you all knew of each other, but I don't think any of the three of you were actually working together and sure. sharing the eyes. And us as the client, we're like, we need this to work. And if you want to work with us, well, you have to talk to this person. Well, I don't know that person. So we made introductions. And now I think there's hopeful going to be a, a, a huge flight plan and runway for each of these groups to work together and on more collaboration to grow, which only benefits everybody. But the, the need for it comes down from the, the consumer having the greatest experience. Yes. The reason why everybody orders Amazon is everything's one button. It's frictionless. It's one button. You have the button to hit, right? Put in your cart or buy now, buy now, buy now. And because it's buy now, you buy a lot. Uh -huh. Oh, my wife, I promise you, I, 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 I almost made my wife get a DNA test when my seven-year-old was born because the Amazon guy was here more than I was. It's unbelievable, but, uh, right? <laughs> I mean, but, I tease, but, the, but, but truthfully, it's, you're right. I, I think everybody's taking the DNA test since Amazon <laughs> has been at everyone's door. But, but that's, what, that's what's making the technology advancements and uh, uh, excitement so powerful is the integration. Yep. When you don't have the integration, trust me, the restaurant industry does not have integration. Yeah. It doesn't exist because either you want to own everything, right? Toast is a great example. We are Toast POS users. We love Toast. Everything about Toast, I'm going to say positive things. We're not going to get into the 99 cent fee that got announced yesterday. Uh -huh. <laughs> everything about it we love. But now all of a sudden Toast wants to be direct integrate, right? Uh, direct online into itself. It doesn't want you to go through these other places. Yeah. It wants to own the consumer as much as possible. That's what every tech wants. And I get it. That's business, right? That's how you create value. All of that makes it more and more difficult for our industry. The reason why is restaurant people do not understand technology. Mm -hmm. Number two is the restaurant people do not have money to invest in technology. And number three, none of us outside of like Yum! Brands and McDonald's and Inspire and Brinker can actually pay money to build it from scratch. And even if we did have the money to build it from scratch, by the time it's built, it's going to be so out of date. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we need, and I implore all restaurant technology people listening to this, is open your API and work with one another to make things work.
I yeah. love Olo. Olo's a great partner of ours, right? Noah and team are fantastic. And I will say we are trying very hard to get Devour and Olo to integrate. 75% of our dark kitchens, our virtual partners, run on Olo. Mm -hmm. And I need them to accept Devour so we can get orders going through the channel and really take advantage of what there has to be offered. So Olo, if you're listening, let's go. Yeah, no, Noah, Noah's been on the show. He's a friend of mine. Um, haven't done this forever. Part of where this the, the whole show came from, Jeff, and really even what I get to do for a day job was to try and solve some of that. Chad can tell you offline because um, I don't necessarily need this to be a plug for what we've done. But our philosophy is that, that, you know what, at the end of the day, it's all about the guest experience and all about how can we make the restaurant tour's life easier and the mm -hmm. guest experience more seamless. And so um, that all being said, what was the biggest surprise that you had going through this? What was the thing that, that, that when, you, when you put it on the whiteboard and said, this is what we're going to do, you pulled everybody together, and now you're like, holy crap, I had no idea that the guests were going to engage this way, that the customers were going to engage this way, that the, that the, the employees were, that it was going to get the, tell me about the biggest surprise. You're, you're totally off track. <laughs> okay. So we, we, we started exploring this over a year ago. Right? Okay. We've been working on this for a long time. And probably the biggest surprise was, oops, crypto isn't working. <laughs> oops, yeah. NFTs are a bad thing. And we had to like, you know, we're going down this path and we started all the benefits we're going to give to the consumer. And, you know, truth be told, we're going to sell a boatload of these NFTs and make a lot of money. Yeah. And that's how we're going to pay for this system. And we're going to keep this thing moving. I mean, that's, we're, we're all in business here, right? That's the thing. And now we're getting closer and closer to like seeing the gold line of launch and all of a sudden crypto implodes and all of a sudden NFTs are a negative connotation. And now it's like, Whoa, hit the brakes. How are we going to change this narrative mm -hmm. and make this work, right? And what are we going to do to, to do this? And, you know, if you're in the space, right? And I'll be honest, the space is like this big. You totally get what we're working on right now. You've heard of all these terminologies. Yep. You understand it. You're excited about it. You want to be in it. This is the space. This is the world. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see my arms. Like, we're... we're in the virtual space where we operate, people are talking about that the virtual restaurants are dead right now. I'm going to go off topic for a second. I saw that. I saw that online. I was like, what are you talking about? Virtual Just because Mr. Beast decided to not do anything. Yeah, we're sorry. The, I'll let you keep going. We're in the infancy stages. We're yeah. year three. Yep. Dead, we're having. We're like hitting a growth spurt. Mm -hmm. right? We're just learning how to walk. So what we're doing here with the collectibles, what we're doing here with Web3 and the conversation we're having about the metaverse this is like, we're literally giving birth. That's how early this is, which I'll be honest with you, it's the most exciting time to be in it, yeah. right? Like this is the fun stage, right? We haven't hit the terrible tool twos yet where we're getting arguments and fighting and not being listened to. Our child loves us and our, we love our child and everybody's telling us how cute we are, right? Uh -huh. That's the yep. stage we're in. So when you, when you talk about the aha moment and what's going on, when you're building something and we are, we are not building it for launch day. We are building something for 36 months from now. And I made that, I'm trying to make that real clear, right? When people say how many people signed up, I say more than I would have thought, but less than they're going to. Right. Cause yep. everything's no, very much so. So the, the, because when you look 36 months out right now today, that's a learning curve. And so when you ask, what did you learn the most or what was the wake up call or what was the unexpected? Every day is unexpected. If today I sell five collectibles, it's like, holy cow, five people got excited about this. Tomorrow, if I sell none, it's like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> and if I sell 100 the next day, it's like, whoa, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And, I, you know, we will learn that and continue to learn every day as the space evolves. I, uh, I, I really love that perspective. I'm, I'm in the process of reading a book that talks about, you know, you should always evaluate everything that you're doing looking backwards, because if you only look at it forward, it's really, really a challenge because you always want to be farther than you are. And if you evaluate it where you were a year ago versus where you are today, you're like, holy crap, I got a lot of stuff done. So even as a leader within our own business, I just had that. I, I was listening to somebody commiserate this morning about, well, I should have been there. And I, should, I said, that's great. 
But look where you were. If I, somebody had told you five years ago that you're going to be where you are today, you'd be making the kind of money, you'd be influenced, you'd be sitting in the room with some of these people, you'd be like, oh, there's no way. Um, somebody had told me three years ago when I launched this podcast that I'd be doing this podcast with you guys. I'd have been like, no way. You know, and that I would have had almost 300,000 downloads so far. I would have told you you were crazy. But <laughs> I'm grateful for the opportunity. And it's it's been fun to... Uh, Fun to learn and fun to educate, you know, the audience and and get people on the on the train. Chad, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, talk to me a little bit about what Devour looks like. I'm a restaurant brand. I want to learn more. Um, where do I go? What do I do? Tell me a little bit more about what uh, what needs to engage and and what would it look like if I got on the phone with you and I'm I see Jeff's vision and I want to be there. Um, talk to me a little bit about what that looks like. So the funny thing is we we love what Jeff's doing. We don't expect more than this many restaurants to be <laughs> yeah, like he showed it. ready for this. Uh -huh. So we say, hey, we want to help you get there, right? We want look at what Jeff's doing, right? Look at what that's what that is and, and take notes, but make it easy on yourself and take that baby step. So foundationally, what our platform is at Devour Go is it comes in technologically now like another marketplace to the restaurant. They plug it in just as easy as they have the other third parties, right? So the Olo that you mentioned, Jeff, right? The, the Chowley, our, our, our integration partner there, Checkmate coming on soon. They can add this channel super easy. So now they can start playing, right? They didn't launch their own collectibles yet, right? They're just like, okay, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm part of the good. game. What can I do? And we'll do, we'll be going to work for them, right? Think about all of those collaboration partners and in, in the Web3 space, awesome digital communities formed around things people don't understand, things people do understand, like sports, esports, um, uh, all kinds of things, big brands getting into Web3 that want, might want to partner with a big restaurant or, or a small restaurant. We'll go to work for them, but if they want to lean in, they can play without having to understand anything, right? So... But then as they get their feet wet and they start to see business results, that might inspire further action and experimentation. And then we say, now look at Jeff Harder. Look where he's at. Look at how much of a lead he's got on you because he started this way before. But now try to catch up. Right. And so that's where we come in. We would just say, hey, let's activate another channel. Start getting you business from blockchain, Web3, right, without you even knowing all that means. Because ultimately, it's about engaging that next generation the way they want to be engaged, this mm -hmm. is how they can start doing that. Yeah, as Jeff talked about, being being with those digital natives where they want to be. So, and Jeff, for for those that are either unfamiliar with what it is that you guys are doing, even outside of the technology, just from the food service perspective, how can they check you guys out? Where would you want them to go check out the product? Go check out what you guys are doing from the technological perspective. How can they connect with your team and what it is that you guys are doing? Well, the best way is wowbow.com. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a, a mapping tool on there that shows you, you type in your zip code, it'll show you where the closest grocery store is to you, it'll show you where, how to order delivery sent to you. Uh, and then obviously everything we're talking about, you can buy the, the collectible and join the membership club on that, uh, on that site, learn more about who we are. And uh, uh, I think the best way to learn more about us is hit rewind and listen to this all over again. I love it. I love it. I'm going to actually ask you just because while you were explaining that, I do think the the vending machine is one of the coolest things I've seen in food service in a really long time. Can you give me a 30 second clip on what it is that you guys did? Because it's pretty remarkable where you guys got to with that. I, I, I literally yeah. was blown away. So uh, if you grant me 45 seconds, I'll get it. Hey, you, you got 32 because that's how long it takes to make it. But no, I'm kind of teasing, obviously. So, uh, look, I've always wanted to be involved in the hot food vending. I think it is absolutely the future. And seven years ago, we found a group to partner with. Unfortunately, early technology ran out of money. And uh, we got paired up with this group. They're called uh, Automated Retail Technologies, Just Bake. They're based in Sarasota, Florida, which is great because they're made in the USA. They're, they're not sending parts across you know, oceans, whatever, they're right here and ready to go. And uh, they've created technology where it's a refrigerated vending machine. And they put, they have two different machines. One is theirs, Just Bake, with multiple different items, including ours. And then they fully skin a Wow Bao machine, which is just Wow Bao products, our Bao, our dumplings, our fried rice, our egg rolls. And they launched these and they've got 40 or so deployed college campuses, uh, airports, hospitals, we're chasing military bases. We're chasing manufacturing plants. 
I mean, to me, this is the future. And yep. it's interesting. I fly out of O'Hare because we're based in Chicago. When you first go through security at Terminal 3 American, there is a wall of vending machines. And this is really, I believe, the future of, uh, uh, of travel, whether it's on a, uh, uh, an interstate and you go through the Oasis or the airports now. And then you think about 24-hour places like police stations, hospitals, military bases, and, and manufacturing plants and colleges and so on. This is a way to get food hot and fast and delicious. And our food works perfectly in that environment. Yeah. So we're really excited for it. Well, I, and I got the opportunity to check it out through the kiosk and I can tell you that the quality of the food is no different than if I would have, I quite frankly, I think sometimes it might be even better because <laughs> the consistency is there as, as sad as that is, yeah. you know, in a brick and mortar versus there. It's just, it's amazing. I know it's, you mean it as a compliment. So I, I did. <laughs> and, and for me, it's like, you know what, you've got human beings making food at times and they're not always the best. And, and so if you can get some consistency, not that I'm trying to get, eliminate those jobs at all. Everybody knows that's listening to the show for more than five minutes. That's not my ploy. But well, I look, think I'm sorry. Act- what's important when people say that about eliminating jobs, somebody's making the machine. Absolutely. Yep. Somebody's servicing the machine. Someone's creating the technology for the yeah. machine. Somebody's Someone's driving the food the there to fill it. I mean, hundred people. Ex- exactly. The, when the cell phone and kiosk came out, oh, it's killing jobs. Someone's got to build the machines. Yes. And employ exactly. and fix the machines and do everything with the machines. We yeah. don't ever. We don't ever replace labor. You find other uses for the person. And what's great about technology, technology for the restaurant space has got to be to enhance the customer experience and make yep. the, the job easier for the employee. Because the job's easier for the employee. You know what you get? You get them talking to the guest. Yes. And what I say was before the pandemic, we were all in the hospitality space. That changed once the pandemic came. We all got in the food space. We need to get back to hospitality. Yes. And technology can get us there because it allows us the time to interact. And that's what's missing. I, uh, I really love that description and I completely agree with you. And it's, uh, it's been part of my, my vernacular for a really long time is, uh, and, and, and again, I want everybody that's listening that has not tried it out when they do get a chance. It's, it's remarkable what they've done. The product is fantastic. Chad and I got to got to share one actually in Chicago because our booth was right next to to where y'all were at uh, at the NRA show. It's kind of funny. Um, well, guys, I, I, I you guys have gone through the gamut. I know we're we're at time. To our listeners, guys, I said it at the onset. You guys have got lots of choices, so I appreciate you guys doing. You know, listening to Jeff, listening to Chad, listening to myself. Um, I'm the dumbest one in the room. These guys just just blew me away with all of the insights. So thank you guys for taking the time. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, whether you're listening on YouTube, listening on LinkedIn, listening on your audio podcast player, please do so. It helps us to understand. If you guys have got guests that you guys want to send our way, please send them our way. Chad and Jeff, thank you guys so much. And to our listeners, make it a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.